Hey guys, today we start the frame for the CNC machine. Check it out. Guys, we're going to take a look at some of the pieces and parts that are going to make up the CNC. First off, the slides. These are going to be my bearings. It's an under drawer slide. I've taken the stops and flattened them out to like this guy right here. Just uh, flattened it out so that uh, this thing will actually extend beyond its factory abilities. Um, and I'll show you a little bit more on that in a minute. This is my lead screw. So I've got a bearing, an anti backlash nut and a flexible connector that connects uh, big, so lead screw size half inch, to little, which is my motor uh, shaft here, five millimeter, I think is what that one is. So I've got that connector, the bearing. On the other end, we've got a bearing and then just kind of a, a capture piece that will capture the other end. It threads on and then locks. So if we take a look at the overall design, I've got like a big uh, cantilevered action going here. So we're going to have a, for lack of a better term, a little bit of a C-shape open side so I can slide material of any size in without having to cut it down. Uh, I think that's going to be nice for me. Um, so I also want this to do 3D printing, plasma cutting, metal work, uh, maybe aluminum, and then wood. So that's, that's what it's for. And chances are, if we're doing metal work, this guy is going to be slid way to the inside here. We're going to be working in that space, not in, not in the space way out here. So hopefully this deflection out here won't become a big issue. Because um, I, I know it won't for plasma cutting, because there's going to be no real force put on here. And plasma cutting is not terribly accurate. Uh, vinyl cutting, no problem. 3D printing, again, no pressure. It'll be cutting wood and cutting metal where there might be some pressure. The wood cutting would be probably where I'll see the most flex in this. Um, but the Y is going to be a table down below that's going to slide back and forth. The cool thing is, even with these drawer slides, they're going to want to flex out on the ends, you know, out here as it sort of extends out here, it's going to want to flex a little bit. But all the pressure is going to be right here where it's going to be, you know, stacked up and nice. So even though out here might flex, it doesn't really matter because the cutting area is right here. So I think that's going to be good, uh, how that's going to go together. Then the Z-axis is going to be up here. I've got it set for 12 inches, and that may seem like overkill, but I'm thinking for 3D printer, it would be nice to have a one foot by one foot by one foot cube. And when I'm doing any other cutting operations, I can actually put on like, let's call it a six inch or eight inch box on top of this that will get us up closer to the business end of the tool so that there isn't much travel. You know, really only you only need like an inch or two of travel when it comes down to that. So that's what I'll do is I'll take up that remaining eight to 10 inches with that. So I've got a little bit of a C shape down here. I did some other drawings that kind of give me some dimensions and how it works. I know this probably looks a little bit confusing right there. Um, so we'll move to this and essentially I've got four assemblies. So I've got the Z axis, which is this guy up here. It'll just be a box that's uh, 12 inches by eight inches. I've got the base, which is this part way down here, which is gonna be in an H configuration, 36 by 20. Then I've got, I'm gonna call it an F or a P configuration, which will be this mast up here, which you don't see the top of that P. I talked to one of my engineers at work and he said, you know, if you can put something at a good distance up here for the X axis to travel on, it will keep it from rotating. So we had a long conversation about that, pretty good conversation. So that's what I'm gonna do, a little P shape up there. Overall, 27 inches tall, and then again, we're going to have about 20 inches of travel out here. Then the Y table, which is just the table part here, is going to be 36 by 20, and uh, that'll be our, our business end there. So it's just going to be a square shape. I may have to add another piece to this, depending on how the screw works out, the lead screw. I did a few sketches. I think I understand it, but sometimes you have to build it to understand it. So that's how it's going to lay out. I know that's a little bit wordy, but that's going to set the table for the entire rest of the project. So I've got some stuff laid out over in the garage. I'm going to get to cutting.
hopefully. I don't know. <laughs> Still can't see the old viewfinder there, so it's kind of like a blind guy doing the video. But uh, that's the x-axis across the top there, I hope. There we go. Let's try that. X-axis across the top there. We got the z-axis there up and down. I don't have the slides on it. Then uh, on the bed, I think you can see the slides there, both sides, where they're going to go. And uh, then the part here that rolls back and forth. So whew, that's how she's going together. I'm going to have to see how to build in some adjustability to all of this because that's going to be hyper, hyper important so that I can square everything up after it's built. So the slides have to work together, of course, but then we have to be able to square everything up. So anyway, uh, I'm going to cut it off there because it probably doesn't look good. <laughs> that was a lot of welding, a lot of cutting, but uh, there you can see one of the crack tubes that I bought had to weld that up. But uh, anyway, that's it for now. I don't know about Tuesday, or sorry, I don't know about Thursday. If the camera parts come, I may be repairing the camera on Thursday, but we'll give it a shot. We'll give it our best. That's it. Don't let me go.